How are England going to raise themselves after the emotional high of defeating one of the best teams in the world, Ireland, this last weekend? That's what they're going to have to do because they're going away to Lyon to play France, who look like they might be back in business themselves. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I'm going to be with you throughout the end of the championship and beyond. So make sure you hit subscribe. It's just down there. It's free to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. And today I'm going to be looking at England and what team I think they're going to be picking to face France this coming Saturday, 16th of March in Lyon. OK, how did England play against Ireland this weekend just gone? Well, brilliantly. I mean, it was, wasn't was perfect. There are errors still. But man, the attacking attempt, the flow, the verve, the variation on tactics and choices that they had was a cut above anything that we've seen for quite a few years, possibly since back to the 2019 World Cup semi-final. This was a great performance from England based on where they've come from. There's still more for them to achieve. There's still better places for them to go. But man, this was a major, major step up for them. And I'm delighted for Steve Borthwick and the players because they deserve something. They deserve something for their hard work, their dedication and their intent and their desire to play and change and adapt and try and improve and move with the times. So I am personally really thoroughly de delighted for this England team and everybody involved in the squad. Um, Elko and myself did a big deep dive into this one. I'll link it up there so you can go and have a look at it. We go into all the details of the game and figure out where it is won and lost. Uh, OK, but moving on to this week. Starting off with some squad updates, back row Dynamo and absolute phenom from the bench. Chandler Cunningham South sadly has had to withdraw with a calf injury. He carried the ball up, smashed over somebody. And then it was actually just after that, as he was coming to rejoin the play, I, he just pulled a calf, I think, as far as I can tell. Uh, you know, at one point he was running to rejoin the play, nobody else around him. And then he was clutching his leg and could no longer continue. England finishing that game with 14 players, which makes, you know, getting that win with the final play even more remarkable. Replacing him in the squad, Newcastle Fanker, Falcons flanker Guy Pepper, who was one of the standout players in the England A game against Portugal, which wasn't much of a fixture. But if you can still concentrate and really play and do your job in a game like that where you know, the, the competition wasn't really there, then that is a good mindset check for me. Uh, and he is tall and he is rapid, absolutely rapid. And, uh, you know, potentially a good line-out option, but also, you know, real good at the, the nuts and bolts of sevens play, uh, as in open side play as well. Now, chances are he's not going to get a game this weekend. So I'm assuming that Borthwitz looked at this as an opportunity to bring in a real youngster, somebody with immense uh, potential to get him involved with the squad and see what it's all about uh, in a, you know, for a Six Nations match. Another question mark from the weekend, Henry Slade came off injured. Borthwick said afterwards that he got a bang in the previous game against Scotland and it looked like he was sort of holding his arm, his right arm to me when he came off. Uh, however, being the spy that I am, I noticed that he was still shaking hands with his right hand afterwards in the celebrations and things like that. So I am going to declare that he's going to be fit for these selection purposes anyway. Um, OK, let's get into it. And it's worth noting England get an extra day's rest compared to France, who will do, be doing a six day turnaround, which is brutal at the end of the championship. Actually, that feels a little bit harsh, but that's the way it is. Uh, OK, England's forwards. And here we go. Let's look at this now. So starting with the second rows, actually, let's start with the skipper, Jamie George. I said it in the match review. It looked like it was 2016 again. England got enough good go forward possession that you could see his amazing support lines. You could see him charging through gaps at times. And we haven't seen that for a long time because England haven't played much rugby for a long time. So that was brilliant to see. Did his nuts and bolts well, run his tank empty and was subbed off at 50 minutes. I'm sure emotionally drained after losing his mum recently as well. It can, you know, it must have been a very tough and emotional day for him. Four through six, this worked. This really worked. These guys all worked so hard. 
they were niggly, they were aggressive, they got involved, they were physical, they did great work at the line out. And this four, five, six to me just looks like it could be there for a very long time as long as they maintain their form. Sam Underhill had a couple of really good moments. Like it was, it was a little bit under the radar at times, but he took a line out. That left-handed line out take was unreal, by the way, at the tail of the line out, which led to Ben Earl's try. And on the quiet, he had some huge cutting tackles and a couple of big carries as well, but just working so hard. I'm not sure. Does the, the, the headgear, does it make him look bigger? It does to me anyway. Uh, and obviously, Ben Earl, just wow. Like uh, England, he's going to be England's player of the tournament, no matter what he does this coming weekend, I feel. And I expect him to have another outstanding game. His footwork before contact just got him so many yards, so many yards. And uh, the clean break that led to the Amani penalty and yellow card was a massive moment in the game. And that was all down to his own footwork, just finding space, finding the gap, and then the power to get through it. Absolutely outstanding for, from Earl. Now then, the props. I thought they went well uh, uh, and generally did a good job against an Irish scrum, which I think was probably had the edge. But we've rotated these guys before and I think I think coming up against this French type side, coming up against that huge right-hand side of their scrum in Antonio and Mia Fu behind him, or whoever they pick there, frankly, they're enormous. I think we are probably going to need Joe Marler in there now. The big question then is, do we start with the other scrummaging prop in Cole alongside him, or do England continue this one scrummager, one loose player combination? That's the question, uh, and I think they will continue with what they've done. I think they think it gives balance to their squad and the forward pack as a whole. And I think, again, just this rotation, right? These guys, if you're starting every week, as a front rower, it can become monotonous. You do need sometimes a different mental challenge to do a different role. And these props, as I said in previous videos, as pairs, I see them as interchangeable. So Marla and Stewart, or Genji and Cole, uh, you know, give you the same kind of balance across the whole game. But I think the key thing here is Marla versus Antonio. I think that's the key battle in the scrum this week. And I think we need England's strongest loose head to go against that. So Marla starts, Stuart then alongside him. Into the backs. And although I picked out Alex Mitchell, had a few, a couple of passes which were just a little bit high, which stunted England's attack. I agree with what Alco said in the review, like his busyness, his pace, the way he got to the ball and moved it really quickly was key in terms of England's tempo. Also key to England's attacking tempo was George Ford, who I thought played fat, flatter and like fizzing, more fizzing than I've seen for a little while. You know, that's a real trademark of his. And I thought he was really on it on Saturday. I thought he really attacked the line and his timing of the pass to Furbank, which led to the Lawrence try, was absolutely clutch. He took the ball and was almost passing straight away, then realised that Gibson Park was backing off. So took that space, just waited long enough to drag Henshaw in, which allowed Furban the quick hands to put Slade away, who then got Lawrence in the corner. It's that kind of tiny detail which Ford is amazing at, and it was brilliant to see him bring it last weekend. Now, the downside of Ford is that his kicking was not great on Saturday. Both out of hand, where I thought at times he was a little bit conservative, and off the tee, where he missed some pickable kicks. However, he's still the man for me. Marcus Smith is coming back to fitness and was brilliant off the bench, obviously. And, he, you know, he did everything right. But I think we start with Ford. And likewise, if for whatever reason he's not having a great day with off the tee or in any other respect or in it, just in any case, you've got Magic Marcus to come on and steer England home. Now, on the wings, I think this is an interesting one because Faye Waboso on the right wing was obviously electric and was so much the reason England did well on Saturday. His post-contact metres are insane and he just got his hands on the ball so often. But what you then miss out on with Freeman going to the other side is in prior games, England had got a lot of joy from kick chase with Freeman getting up to win back box kicks and other types of kicks. It's more like players have tend to be only good at that on one side because you have to lead with a different arm. So Freeman seems to be good at leading with his right arm. But on the left wing, he didn't get as much joy with it. So what we're losing 
Uh, we're losing with Freeman there, but we're gaining with Fayo Waboso. And I think if we're gaining the dynamism and the directness and the spark of Fayo Waboso, we're losing some kick chase. I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, I'll take that wager for sure. Okay, the centres, Oli Lawrence was, uh, he looked like a different player. He looked like he was back to the player that started the season for Bath. Thoroughly deserved his try and was excellent throughout, as was Furbank. A couple of errors, but another real key thing is this, this mental fortitude. Okay, if you're going to make errors, and errors are always going to happen. Nobody's ever played the perfect game. You've got to be able to bounce back and get back into the game like it didn't happen. And I think Furbank can do that. So, along with, you know, just his ambition to challenge and run back kicks, I think has just changed England's attitude a little bit, along with some other things as well. But I think it's a key part of England looking like they're desperate to try and challenge defences more now. So, overall, a very strong game from him and he keeps his spot for sure. I've just left 13 blank there because if Slade doesn't make it for whatever reason, what would England do? There's a few options. You could bring Dingwall back and move Lawrence to 13, where he's more comfortable. Dingwall having started the championship and not to set the world alight, but he did okay. Or you could potentially move Freeman to centre, where he's played a lot for Northampton this year. Could be interesting to see him there. And then bring Daly back on the wing again, looking for consistency and selection somewhat uh, compared to previous weeks. I would say those are the two most likely options. If I had to choose against this French team, I think they would go Dingwall Lawrence if Daly doesn't make it. Okay, onto the bench, but we'll get Slade in there. Get Slade in there. I'm going to say he's going to be fit. Tough guy, Henry Slade. Onto the bench and the props swap in. I'm going to have Ethan Roots come in for Chandler Cullingham South. I think potentially with the size of these French forwards, we need more heavy carriers, a bit more grunt on the bench than we did in the previous week anyway. So I think Roots absolutely fills that that charter. He's the man for that job. And then all the rest stay the same for the same reason as before. You know, you've got some spark in there. You've got some game management. And uh, while well, Dombrant actually in the game at the weekend almost got the outside break and put Freeman away, which was wild. And I thought he almost scored right before uh, Marcus Smith kicked the drop goal as well. What a story that would have been. Anyway, what do we want to see from this England team? I want to see them continue. I was so proud, or not proud, that's the wrong word. I don't need to be proud of them. I was so impressed with them that they stuck to their guns, even after a real sketchy performance against Scotland, where so little went right for them. They stayed true to what they're trying to achieve, and they got the performance and the result against world-class Ireland, and I was so chuffed for them. So... They've set some standards there now. Right? That needs to be the minimum in terms of intensity, in terms of attack and intent and execution. And they need to keep going and go on from there. What we saw from France this weekend is that if you keep possession against them, move the ball and challenge them side to side, you will find space. You will find weak defenders. And I think England, if France in the right areas, will cause them all manner of trouble. That's what I want to see. But... It's got to be gone and done. It's got to, it's away in France. It's going to be tough. What do you think? What do you think at home? Do you think this is the right team? Do you think this is the right selections to go away to France? And potentially, don't forget, England can still win this championship. Other results have to go their way, but it's still there for them. And uh, in any case, you know, four wins out of five would be a really uh, good return for this, this squad, which is still very much in transition. So let me know in the comments down below. Are there any players missing from this squad that you'd like to see in there? Anybody that I've picked that you think, you know, is probably just uh, not really deserving of their place anymore? I'd love to hear you for a, a sort of friendly conversation down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. It helps other people find it. And you subscribe. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.